Okay, so we have a little bit more information as to why Sasha keeps going on about Ross's temper. Here we are guys, Married at First Sight UK Season 9, Episode 30, the final commitment ceremony. We've, we have been committed to the show that we've made it to the final commitment ceremony. If we were going to marry a show, guys, we'd be marrying Married at First Sight. And we'd be faithful, unlike some of these losers. So, everyone's getting ready for the final commitment ceremony. Amy is basically saying she doesn't want to see Luke's face. They haven't seen each other since they're bust up. She doesn't want to see his face. She doesn't like anything about him. He's a liar. And of course, Luke is saying, well, I think she set me up just to hurt me and assassinate my character, as he said before. And generally, looking at comments online and stuff, the general consensus seems to be that Amy was meaner to Luke than Luke was to Amy. But obviously, more will be revealed at the commitment ceremony. I feel so much anger towards him. I don't even want to look at his face. I just feel so let down. As soon as somebody lies to me, that breaks the trust. I have no idea what goes on in his brain. I have no idea why he lies, and I have no time left for it. I haven't seen Amy since I took the ring off at the restaurant with her friends. I really wanted to meet Amy's friends, and I feel like Amy squandered the opportunity by dealing with it the way she did on the night. I feel like there was an agenda to upset me, to attack me, and Amy seemed to be the one that was egging it on, so I find that very hurtful. And I took my ring off, and yeah, it just makes me feel even more disappointed. So I'm in no shape or form any better in terms of deciding what my headspace is at with Amy. Then we have Sasha and Ross, and Sasha telling us that they've been apart, having got back from the homestays, and Ross lost his temper again, so they spent time away. And for some reason, as is the contrivance here, Ross ends up talking to Amy, Sasha ends up talking to Christina, and Sasha tells Christina that when Ross gets angry and loses his temper, he throws stuff, guys. He breaks things. He throws food against the wall. So we didn't know this up until now. Now, to me, that is a massive problem because if he's throwing food and breaking things now, what's he going to be like 10 years from now? And will he eventually change his target from an inanimate object to a living being? You know, you get what I'm saying, you get where I'm going. It's not a good sign. That's, that's a bad sign of outbursts of anger and that needs to be dealt with. And he really shouldn't be married if he's like that. So there we go. So I think, obviously, now we know this information, all I'd say to Sasha is, absolutely not. You can't marry this guy. You've got to get away, because if you don't get away, it'll only get worse. He needs to sort that out and then come back to relationships when he's got rid of that trait, because you simply cannot have a successful marriage if your husband's going to go off on one and throw the food you've cooked or break something that's precious to you or perhaps swear and verbally abuse you. No, 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 we can't have any of that. So if that's what Ross is really like, and we have no reason to sit, think that Sasha would lie about that, then I think the relationship is pretty much dead in the water. Hey, the day we get back, yeah. out for a drink, all of a sudden out of nowhere, Ross lost his temper and stormed off. See, that's what my argument, I lost my temper. But it's not just me though, it's Sasha as well. She did have a fire in her. Have you spoke to her? So, yeah. Uh, that was just today. Boss, you messaged Sasha saying stay in separate rooms tonight. That's a lot. We're both very angry. When he left, he texted me saying, I can do better, and everyone will see that I deserve better. The only person I can see that deserves better is me. Mm -hmm because I've put so much into the relationship. Mm. I completely support him all the time. You deserve better than that. But yeah, what more do you want? What more can I give? Uh, her response was, good luck finding somebody who puts up with your shit. It's never gonna get sorted, calling each other names. I basically just text him to say, you literally the one in the wrong when you're treating me like it's me. You've not even apologised. Oh. Oh, you can get argumentative, but my anger in comparison to Ross's is completely different. Like, Ross likes to break things, throw things, like food up the wall. Not acceptable. So I thought he'd wake up thinking, God, that was really bad, whatever I spoke to Sasha yesterday. 
but he's not said a word to me. Well, if Luke thought he was going to get an easy ride from the panel of experts, he had another thing coming. They weren't particularly merciful to him about the whole cutting up the photo thing and all that kind of stuff, and him saying that he couldn't really read Amy's facial expressions particularly well. And they really weren't very merciful to him at all about the whole conversation he had with Amy about her photos and the photos of her when she was younger and 18 before she had her work done on her face. And I'm, I'm baffled about that. He didn't seem to get any sort of encouragement for, for, for the way he answered the question. How was he supposed to answer those questions? What was he supposed to say? I don't understand. Even the girls in the room were looking all kind of like, you know, uptight about it. And I thought, well, if you show your husband a picture of you when you were younger, like, you know, a woman, not like when you were a child, like when you were like 20, 25, is he supposed to say, oh, you looked beautiful then and you look beautiful now? Or is he supposed to say, oh, you look so much better now than you did then? Or is he supposed to say, you looked really nice then, but you don't look nice now? I mean, wh what is he supposed to say? I don't understand. I think, the le I think the only way he can get out of it is to say, oh, you look beautiful in every photo that was ever taken of you ever in the world. I, I feel like it's a bit of a weird one. They seem to get quite irritated with him. Of course, that he's going to improve, and I thought she did improve. But if there were the two girls in front of me, I would pick this one now. Babe, if you go into a girl's house and say, you, you practically said you look fucking fat on this photo. No, bloated doesn't mean uh. fat. Bloated means you look a bit bloated. Okay, so once again, misunderstanding in the communication, which happens over and over and over again with, with both of you. I think reading the room is a real theme here. The impression we're getting is that you're not watching Amy, you're not reading Amy. But I struggle to understand sometimes how you're feeling. I don't know sometimes whether it's because facial expressions don't come across so well. No, we're not going to take that. We're talking about your capacity to read your partner. And we're hearing so many examples here of you completely missing the cues. So either you're not demonstrating empathy or you're choosing to overlook them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to agree with you on that one. And you're not going to blame her face. Quite frankly, what you need to be doing is reading your partner. She's telling you these comments make her feel uncomfortable. That should be all that matters. That's what's important here. I know, and it doesn't make me feel good to know that I've done that. But from my point of view, I feel like it's, it's very difficult because everything I do or say is not right or inappropriate. But thankfully, Amy got a little bit of it too because of the way she set Luke up with her friends and he felt like he didn't have a safe space there. And then Luke does admit that he regrets throwing his ring off. And, yeah. How do you think he felt in that moment? Probably a little bit intimidated, but... You know, what's interesting is that you're not even listening to him. Because he just told you how he felt. He just said, I felt humiliated. Regardless of lies in the past, you are failing to just acknowledge your role in this. Yes. There's a lot that he has to do, but this process is about each of us becoming better. So if you want the transparency, you have to show up and say, you know what, I'm gonna create a safe environment for you. Yeah. You have to be empathetic, to stay in the moment and say, you felt humiliated and I'm sorry for my role in that, period. Mm -hmm. You removed your ring. Yeah. Why? That was the definition of an immature person, Paul. I should have kept my cool and I regretted it the moment I, I took it off. Yeah, and you know, Luke, I know you adore Amy. I think part of your lying is because you may not feel in your heart that you're enough for her. And you're constantly trying to figure out how you could fit into her world. These are issues that you have. You have to know that you are enough. So my only question to you right now is, can you consistently be truthful? Then it comes to decision time and Amy says leave. Luke says stay. And now we're waiting for Amy to decide whether she wants to continue with the marriage, because obviously it's the final ceremony, to see whether she will actually carry on or back out. And she seems pretty much 
set, I think, on backing out. But she may say stay for the sake of giving it one more chance. But, I don't know, she seems um, to have lost all interest in him. Although I did thought, thought he said some things that might have the strength to lure her back in. Brought out a side of me that I've never seen before. And I really don't want to be that person. And for that reason, I could leave. Okay. Luke? Um, I was in a dilemma. How can I say stay when I make her feel like this? I want you to be happy. This is the first and the last thing I want. You being happy. Perhaps I'm not good enough to make her happy. As painful as that is, it's the truth, is the truth. But I really like her. I feel she's really good for me. So I'm willing to try everything I've got left in me to give you a glimpse that I can be the Luke that I need to be for you. And for that reason, I said I'm going to stay. Uh, right. So we'll get to Sasha and Ross in a minute, guys. That's my dog. And I have not licked my dog. He knows he's not supposed to be here in the room with me. And I keep telling him to leave, but he won't leave. So maybe I should lick him, maybe then he'd run away. Anyway, you're not supposed to be in here, Flash. Oh, listen, back to Married at First Sight, sorry. I do genuinely have a dog. I'm not just making it up. Amy says, okay, I'll stay with you, Luke, as long as you don't lie to me. So now Luke's got to not lie to her for a while and maybe that'll be repaired. I'm not so sure. I think uh, it might not last, but we'll see. That's all I can say. I don't know where we can go from here. If I'm honest. If you have anything left in you and you can prove that you can go a few days without lying, then that's a start. But if it continues, then I don't want to carry on. That's a very fair request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Good work. Then we move on to Nathan and Lacey, which of course is both stay. We knew they were going to stay. Good for them. I don't want to be negative about them. I really like Nathan. I, I, I did really like Lacey, but she's been a bit weird the last few episodes. But nevertheless, I think they're a good, good couple. Nice people. Family, especially Lacey's family, quite strange. So, I'll put stay. <laughs> Um, so I definitely feel like my feelings for Nathan are getting stronger. You're my safe place, but my best friend, my family approve. And they said if we don't work out, they still want to know you, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is heading in the love. It's going in the love. Yeah, direction. I feel like we're tap dancing around the love mm -hmm. at the minute. <laughs> so yeah, of course I'd love to stay. Ooh. Sasha and Ross, right? So Sasha and Ross sit down and Sasha starts to go into detail about, you know, his temper and how bad it is. And the experts just say, yeah, you're both really passionate people. But if you were sitting with a friend and your friend said to you, or my husband when he gets angry, he throws his food. He breaks plates. What do you say? Gosh, you guys are so passionate. Would you? I wouldn't say that. I'd say that's a, that's a danger sign. Get out now. But that's what they say. I don't quite understand why they didn't say more. First off, I just want to say, I know that my emotional regulation is bad. I can be argumentative, you know I can. You've seen how I can be argumentative. How I've been with Alex, for example. The issue is when Ross gets a temper, how bad it is. He's got this attitude and this tone Food gets thrown at the wall. I get called names. He was calling me a little fake bitch. The most recent time it happened last night, I always thought when today we'd probably be like, oh, I can't believe I just spoke to Sasha like that. But he didn't even speak to me. He doesn't even feel remorseful when he reacts the way he reacts. 
so I feel like I've got nothing to work with. Ross, I noticed as you're listening, you're shaking your head. It's not just me, I tell you the right. It can't be just me. I'm not flipping for no reason. You have to tell people what I don't know. Sometimes it's like the smallest thing. I was texting Kieran the one day once we got back in from the pub and he was like, what you kept texting Kieran for? No, no, no. Hang no, on, no. hang on. I caught an attitude. I went, well, what, well, what's the problem? And he picked up his food and he threw it up the wall. Talking about the Kieran situation, I think they when got back to the apartment, promised me we had the conversation before anything else. So soon we got back to the apartment, the first thing she did was take Kieran and I was waiting, sitting down. That's what I got pissed off about. And, and I was in the room. Oh, is it OK? Am I allowed to do that? Do that because she was on her own. That's what bugged me and that's what pissed me off. The thing when it comes to an argument, we don't know when to stop and the more it builds up and that's where it gets worse. I can love it, honestly. Mm. Ross and Sasha, we've seen your fiery sides. In fact, that's one of the compatibility points for the two of you is you are both incredibly passionate, but it can also lead to butting heads. This is about the dynamic between the two of you and you are both contributing to it. It's clear to me that Sasha's upset, if not scared. And she admits, and you guys who defend Alex would like to hear this, she admits that she can be very quick to be led by her emotions as she says she was led with her emotions regarding Alex. She admits she was quite irate with Alex and probably, maybe, maybe perhaps a bit too emotionally led with her feelings of him. But the woman is clearly rattled and I think that's why she chooses to leave. And I'd be amazed now as we go back from commercial break whether she's actually going to go back on that decision. Because I think she wants to leave not because of moving, not because of Blue, Ross's child, but I think she wants to leave because I think she's scared of Ross. Much as she loves him, I think she's seeing a very dangerous man here. That's right, I'm at what I said about willing to make this work and fight for it because this is what I need there, babe. I'm very sorry for what happened. Believe me when I say this, I'm going to make you back up here again. I don't want us to be on the right path. Be happy, yeah, I'd shoot. <coughs> Stay. <laughs> And to you, Sasha. Obviously, you know how much I care about you. I, it's a lot. It's really deep. <laughs> because when things are good, it's it's magical. But my head's just absolutely messed, to be honest. I definitely saw a different side to Ross. Having a husband that has a temper is a complete no. Even if we do get argumentative with each other, I don't think that's a good enough excuse to be throwing your food at the wall. Saying I'm a fake bitch. And I am absolutely emotionally drained. I did right, leave. Clearly I was wrong about Sasha. Because even though she said leave, she's now been persuaded to stay. So, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I hope everything they've said is true. I'm not falling for some weirdness here. But I just don't understand why she would want to stay if her main reason for wanting to leave was the man's temper and anger. Because those things don't just disappear in a week. It takes months and years for those behaviours to change. But, there we go, she's chosen. Stay. I'm happy to tell like her, I'm willing to make this work, I'm going to fight for it. Now that you've had this conversation with us and with Ross, have you changed your decision in your mind? Well, Uh, 
Yeah, because I want to believe that the relationship will change. You can do this, guys. Yeah, you're both on the same side here. Work together as a team. And I'll be very interested to see if that... What am I going to say? I know it doesn't last. I was going to say I'm very interested to see if it lasts. It doesn't last. We know this because they've broken up on the outside. Okay, well, now we know why. Polly and Adam, they stay together. They both choose stay. I think seeing you at your home stays has changed a lot of things. It was really nice to see you in your home environment. And I'm excited to see what the rest of the process brings. So for that reason, I said stay. We've had, yeah, a start from obviously a bad week that then improved and we spoke about obviously what we need to do and what we're going to do. And yeah, I've enjoyed it as much as I haven't, but I feel like we've needed that for again us to be where we are. So I have decided to stay. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. If we go back a few weeks to when this show first started, they were probably least likely to stay together. Adam didn't seem at all interested in her. He kept on going on about how, you know, he's, she's not the type of figure he goes for. He normally goes for this sort of woman, that sort of woman. And he got a lot of hate online for that. But then the table switched as Polly's character came out in various situations and everyone found Polly quite intrusive and quite rude and quite judgmental and a bit of an agitator. You know, so I think they've both done a pretty good journey together. And yeah, they, they may just do it. They may stay together. I personally think Polly's outbursts, for me, w would be something I really struggled with unless they were to completely stop. Because I just, I, I don't like the way she does her public outbursts. But if Adam is fine with it and Adam can handle it, good on Adam. And now we're finally at Kieran and Christina. The, the finale, if you will. Because they seem to be devoting the entirety of the rest of this episode to Kieran and Christina. So I can only assume it's not going to end well, but I'm still kind of bored by them. I kind of feel like Kieran should have said what he's saying now, weeks ago, and not dragged the hurt out as long as he has. I know I'm not going to meet another girl like you. You're a fucking superstar. And I'm really sorry to put you in this position, Christina. Uh, it was never my intention. I'll always think the world of you. I just know that I can't give you the best version of me. And for that reason, I thought I'd leave. Okay. Thank you, Kieran. Christina? I feel I put in 110% effort from day one. I can't just turn my feelings off overnight. Kieran knows that. I have been so patient and so understanding, so respectful. The ball's been in his court for ages. So, gonna leave. Okay. Wow, you've both written leave, so of course this is the end of the experiment for the two of you. I promised myself that I wouldn't cry, so I'm not going to. <laughs> It has been such a joy to be on this journey with you. The effort that you've put in has been amazing. I genuinely, genuinely wish you both the very best. Thank you. Right, so Kieran and Christina is over everyone. They both chose leave and I have to say much respect to Christina. I thought after Kieran chose leave that Christina was gonna choose stay. But thankfully, 
she makes a good point. She said, he could have said this to me weeks ago, months ago, but he's chosen to do all this now, so I'm choosing leave. You know, effectively with her actions, she's saying, I know I'm worth more than you being indecisive about whether you love me or not. And I'm glad she did that, and I think she probably caught him off guard with that. Because he has wasted her time, let's be honest, after all his, you know, big words about, oh, you are my woman, I've never met another one like you, you're so unique, you were made for me. And then it goes from all that, the heights of that, to, I want to leave. I appreciate nothing can prepare you for someone with PMDD. I appreciate that, I understand that, but nevertheless, it's better to get the truth out straight away than delay and delay and delay and delay. And then that little truth that you wanted to say weeks ago now becomes a massive mountain of truth that you just kind of dump on someone and leave them with the fallout from that. So I think, well done her, she chose the right thing to do there. I think it's a shame, I, I, when they first got married, honestly guys, I thought they were going to have no problem breezing through the entire series, but I was completely and totally wrong. And I hope Christina finds someone nice and kind who can love her like she wants to be loved. I'm not so sure about um, Kieran. He seems, I don't, know, I don't know what he wants, and I don't know who would be suitable for him. Because, you know, remember he said, oh, you know, all these traits of Christina's reminded me of my ex. Again, this is something you could have said ages ago. Ah, oh, never mind. I know he's getting, he's getting duly roasted on social media. But there we go, guys. So now we're down to our final couples. Those who've chosen to both stay, or one stay, one leave. And we've got final dates tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. As always, write your comments below. Let's chat. Let's discuss it. And now let's end the video. Good night.